think 10 is a lot. 10 is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we talk about comping again? Because I still feel like I'm sounding bad. Yeah, it's hard. This is a rough room for a dude. It's very unforgiving, it's dry. You know, so it's oh, hard to sound make. Right. Huh? You sound alright. Well, but it's like, it, but I'm saying even for me, like for real, oh, it's sure. hard to mm -hmm. like. We play, we kind of played a little bit medium, not so ballady. Uh huh. But like with real ballads, it's about getting a good texture. So it's like it's almost easier in a room like this to play with your thumb. Mm -hmm. To just well, not that actually doesn't sound good here either. So it's just about finding that place where you can get like a pleasing sound, your version of a pleasing sound. Experiment with where you're holding. Right? Here there's a lot of brightness. Maybe you need to angle your pick a little, a little bit flatter to get like a, more of a stringy texture. So real slow ballads, right? A lot of people, like when you see them to stay in time, they double time the right hand. They go like... Right, when people play like kind of to get like that little bit, little bit of like a funky tilt when that's how some of the gypsy guys play like Noah to do ka to do ka to do ka to really have that subdivided feeling but what I was talking about is literally just kind of making a soft texture and my two and four are just kind of like brushing and letting go. Right? Just imagine like a sniff. And yeah, I think a lot of time, like even with your left hand, you gotta sort of check your fingering to make sure you can make it sound good with the right mm -hmm. hand. So for me, like if it's, if I'm really kind of sweeping the whole way across the guitar, I can't really have a muted high E string. Oh, sure. So I can't use any voicings that are just like four string voicings. With oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like I'm using completely six string voicings to where everything is a part of that stroke for everything. Maybe a transition like that could be like not that, but the bulk of it is just really four chords, five or six strings, depending on okay. the root. So like... Even here, I guess I guess I do do that, but you gotta be conscious that you're sort of stopping here. You don't go. Uh huh. It's a ballad. That shit pops out. It's not gonna work. I I almost use my pinky on the guitar to sort of stop where I'm going when I'm playing that slow. Not really. I'm like dragging it a little bit. So that's not something I'm like consciously aware of. But yeah, definitely touching it with the pinky to minimize the range of motion in a ballad. I'm not using pure, mo it's not. Because if I do that, I'm gonna slam into it. Right? Yeah. It's gonna make a click. I don't want that necessarily for this texture. So. And it's just about committing to that feeling. If you really are able to feel the way it feels to make that sound, then you can just keep going through the entire tune using that kind of idea. Try it. One, two, uh, even slower. Let's do it like a one, two, three, four, one. So to me, first of all, that's in halftime, but the yeah. but the two and four sound really short when you do it. Mm, okay. together it doesn't breathe yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't stop imagining that drum groove you're that drummer 
So some part of you needs to have that dance where, somewhere. Your shoulders, your legs, you can tap your foot, unlike what Danny does. You know, you, you can just be in that space. Because that's, that's what your job is. Your job is to meditate on this sound pattern and the way you're shaping those sounds. So. You need to be able to play in a way that you like. Because for me, the fun is to just move shit around and try stuff. So for me, that's like already not the place I would come, but I'm just trying to play interestingly right now, right? So just trying to make some stuff happen. That's sort of how I practice. I think playing alone at home, like, you know, just being, having the ability to kind of get through tunes where it's kind of like this space where it's in between comping and soloing, where you're just kind of playing mm. alone and trying to ride that feeling of the groove the whole way through. It's more realistic to practice comping that way because practicing comping without a soloist mm. is impossible. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't. It's like all, all you get is just an approximation. Like a, a, the biggest part of comping acoustically is to drop your volume below something else that's going on. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like the mixing um, part of it. Right? People treat playing rhythm guitar like it's just learning a right hand pattern and a left hand pattern and, you know, shapes. And that's true to an extent. That's a huge part of it. But the bulk of the skill is putting your sound underneath somebody else and then changing the texture of what you're doing to make the music feel as as good as it can feel that's the challenge so the idea that i'm going to sit with a metronome and go like something like that and just try to really get it on the click that that's going to help me in some way it's ridiculous mm. It's not about that, you know. It's really about, you know, if anything, comp for yourself, like the way that a piano player plays at a cocktail party. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you play some comping and then you solo a little bit. 
and you just let that go on and then you can actually have a few bars of solid comping for yourself as space right so Serious, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What'd you learn? Uh, I never practiced like that. Well, um, why not? Never thought of it. I but mean, the, sometimes I do, but not. So what do you do? Oof. Like, what do your practice look like? Mm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What do you do, Nick? <laughs> Show us what you do. <laughs> the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> now it's um. Sometimes, like, I'm trying to work on, like, a specific, like, rhythm. Um, usually, or, like, lately I've been, like, just playing a while and then trying to isolate, uh, like, take, like, a mistake I made, stop, probably a bad thing, and then, like, figure out a different way that I could, like, you know, put something else there. Uh -huh. uh, that's been the majority of it. And then, like, with uh, my spazzing out of the right hand, I've been trying to, you know, just practice, like, high tempos, soft and not a... Uh, yeah, amortized. That, like, yeah. I obviously like to talk about like the conceptual things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, all the freedoms and like you know where you should like your choices, your all this, but the technical. Jesus yeah. Christ, it's so big. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's such a big challenge for people. It's like it's the biggest. Mm -hmm. I think like. <sighs> I just have been practice. I've been thinking about technique for so long, right? I've been. I went so deep in that direction of like picking, figuring out different ways of getting around the fretboard, um, and I've been getting away from it for years. For years, you yeah. know. But when I was a kid, that's like literally all I practiced, and I practiced really seriously, like all the shred stuff. So, for me, it's easy to forget that some people haven't gone through that whole thing that I did oh, yeah, with yeah. picking, you know, with this and like just the scope oh, yeah, of the pick. challenge <laughs> yeah. is so insane. It's just, it's mountains on mountains on mountains of work just to get to where you can just cut through a string the way you like, mm -hmm. you know, just, just to get your downstroke together. And yeah, yeah it, it, takes a, it takes a really long time. So I guess everybody should have like a technical... I sh the thing is, I don't need it right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can die happy with the technique I have. You know, yeah. I'm learning things, but like, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty set, you know, and like the way I pick, I gave it a lot of thought, you know what I mean? Like, I, there's, I can do a lot of the things I think about without thinking at all about what my picking hand is doing at this point, mm -hmm. you know? But it wasn't like that forever. Like a lot of the time building up to it, it was just the first three years that me and me and Danny started playing Gypsy Jazz, I wouldn't solo at all. Can yeah. you imagine me not soloing at all? <laughs> no. Right, you know me. <laughs> yeah. 
I didn't take one solo in th like three years. It took me that from like 2013 to 2017-ish, maybe a little earlier, 12. Uh, yeah, 2012, I think we started playing gypsy stuff. I think it wasn't until 2016 or 15, maybe 15 and change, that I really started soloing. Because I just, I had this, I, I only had my electric guitar technique. And like, it, for me, like the feeling of playing this music, like, I, I can still do it, you know, I can play, hold the pick the way I hold an electric guitar pick and I play all of me, it sounds like... That, that's how I play electric guitar, uh -huh. you know, uh, or even le like, um, maybe thinking about... It. That's the actual pressure I use on the sword. Yeah. Right? With gain, that becomes like a fucking monster. But here, it sounds like I'm an actual fucking art art, right? It doesn't, like, it's like, what is this guy doing? He's not pressing hard enough. <laughs> so for me, when I started playing gypsy guitar, my first inclination was trying to play that way just harder. So I was trying to force the lines out. And everything kind of sounded like this with my picking and like the amount of pressure I was putting with my left hand. It just didn't, I was like, oh, this is not going to work. Uh -huh. It's like, I can't just do what I was doing harder because it, that whole way of playing is designed for one of these. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, how do people make a sound? How do you hold your left hand on an acoustic guitar? How do you hold your right hand on an acoustic guitar? How much pressure do you need to make the sounds? That's the perspective I took to rebuilding it. But in those three years that I was rebuilding it, I, I didn't have anything together. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I tried to play minor swing and I just didn't have a way of getting around. Everything was kind of half built. So it took like those three years to just get to a place where I could start trying to put together a solo and still sounded really bad. Because I, you know, I built my technique from scratch for acoustic and, you know, it, it just took years. It took so many years to just start getting comfortable, you know, where like I really feel like I'm, and I did like a bajillion hours live feeding. I think that's how, how did you hear about us? Uh, I think like the old like African shop tie uh, video. video and then, gotcha. yeah, later on those. The live feeds. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was doing those like for years early on. But, you know, the result was that I was just, I spent so many hours inside the tunes on camera. Most, a lot of, a lot of my practice, you know, in those days were like just doing like three hours of live feeds a day where I would have an excuse to just play tunes beginning to end with, without stopping. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, like in my life, that camera being there you know, for me almost was like my incentive to go out and play tunes. I wouldn't go home and play them for another three hours. Like, you know, I just, that was my practice time. Yeah. So I would, I would get through like playing, I don't know, 50 tunes a day, 60 tunes a day, and yeah. just do that for hours, right? So that's really quality practice. That was, but that was quality practice for me at that time. I'm a yeah. really specific case. What, you know, the question would be like, how do we get you to have quality practice with your right hand that's going to be efficient? And I think a big component in that has got to be to play actual music alone. You know? Yeah. You can play it with a metronome, like if you're actually playing and you make the metronome groove. But what you can't do really is practice rhythm guitar mm. without a solace. It's just, it's too much missing. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, anyways, let's. Let's put on one of those click jacks and see if we can make it groove. We're gonna call it a lesson in 10 minutes because it's my intermittent, uh, intermittent fasting. <laughs> sounds so bad <laughs> right like the sound of it but there's a way to make that groove right so yeah practicing this way if it's like swing tunes and really treating the metronome like it's your buddy now on the beats like on two and four 
that's a great way to just practice, to just get through the entire... That felt pretty good yeah for me I just to, to be there with the metronome as my buddy right I'm just playing tunes it's just there yeah instead of a person that's good that's a good thing to do so you should I can do that you should do more yeah. of that all right let's call it for this one. <laughs>